Da! Welcome to my lab. Here we take games that are so vanilla it hurts. We mush them up and turn them into a game for me. Today, we're gonna be testing just how much modding can actually change a game. You think you can randomize Pokemon yet? Modding in video games. The only way people control anything in their lives anymore. In layman's terms, modding is essentially taking a game primarily done on PC, brainwashing and tricking it into lying to itself, trying to get it to be something that it really isn't. Huh. Now, before we go any further, some games just aren't ready for release. In cases like these, we gotta pop them back into development to let them cook a little bit longer. Now, modding has been in the hearts and minds of gamers since the 90s, with the first large modding community spawning out of the hit game Doom, which released in 1993. Now, the commercially successful FPS game that changed a generation of games didn't come without its repercussions. Now, what are those repercussions, you might ask? Well, just a little thing called modding. Yeah, that's right. As soon as gamers got their hands on this, it was only a matter of time before the customization. Yeah, basically when the first big mods came out, those that got the game on PC made what is essentially reskins of Doom wrapped around the idea of a theme. Think of a really unique paint job for your car. It doesn't really change the functionality of the car. It only changes how you interact with it and enjoy the experience. Now, this type of modding, while surface level, does have some neat little quirks about it. The main one that stands out among this crowd would have to be the Doom Simpsons mod that made all of the enemies different characters from the Simpsons, all having individualized sprites to match the Doom enemies that were placed on top of. This mod, while it was only a skin, was almost ahead of its time in the depth that the creator put into it. It not only had a reskin of all the different enemies, but it specifically chose which enemies would be the Simpsons character based on what would work for the lore of the Simpsons. Not only that, but they even included sound effects for each of the enemies. Oh. Wow, I love the Simpsons. Okay, so the first mods were simple. For little niches, couple fans have a thousand. I personally just don't see what the big deal about them is. Dad? Yeah. Turns out, mods are a bit deeper than just adding your favorite characters to your favorite games. But how deep does it go? Well, some of the most popular games of all time started out as mods. CSGO was made from Half-Life 2. Dota 2 and StarCraft were both made from different parts of the Warcraft series. Heck, a gem like Stardew Valley came straight from Harvest Moon. All these games wouldn't be here without the people that could see past the games that preceded them and make a lot of people's favorite games of all time. And then there's Chex Quest, God's favorite mistake. This game came at a time when modding was at an all-time high for the Doom franchise. Yeah, turns out that Doom had its hand in everything when it came to modding. Developed by Digital Cafe, Chex Quest was a Doom clone that took the Doom formula and applied to what can only be seen as unholy. It being rated T for teen. This never made sense to me. The whole marketing scheme of it all made it so you should want to push this towards kids. Ideally, the ones eating your cereal. I mean, you already took out all of the blood and sound effects from the game. But nope. They want to be cool and edgy and get themselves rated T for teen. It's just, with the product you're promoting, why would you go for something that could limit the reach of the brand that you're trying to make as generic as possible? There's a joke here. Some might say that it's too easy to get confused between Chex Quest and the Simpsons reskin. Each of them are taking the Doom engine and putting different characters as enemies, and both were probably made in the basement of a single story house. With the only difference between the two being that Chex Quest had a budget of $500,000. I prefer the one with the groundskeeper, Willie. Jam Scott! Now, games sprouting from the creativity of other games is some of the best things that you can have for gaming. But there's something that mods do that eclipses even this. Picking up where the developers left off, this. This is the ultimate culmination of mods and their purpose for existing. By having the community that loves your game so much fix your game 
for you when you release it in a half finished state while still garnishing all of the profit from every last person who paid the full price i mean i just gotta give you a hand not even dr evil could have thought of something so vile now it's not a perfect system see the problem is you have to already have people hooked on your games in order for them to care enough to fix the broken games you release with games like Avengers or Crackdown, sure, there are people who like to see the game succeed, but for these live service games and other new releases that don't have the dedicated fan base behind them, well, there's only one thing that really happens then. But there is a company who's got it all figured out. If you love capitalism and getting caught in the rain, you're gonna love this because you have found your new god. The co-owners of the largest media franchise in the world, the one with the man with the stash that finally made Chris Pratt famous, it's Nintendo! Ah, Nintendo. The creators of some of the best games of all time. Mario, Zelda, Animal Crossing. All giant hits in their own right. But none of them hold a candle to what is by far the largest of the bunch, Pokemon. The game in today's day and age needs no introduction. After nine generations of new monsters coming out, bringing joy to several generations of people, it's no wonder why it's been such a hit and seen such popularity. But this doesn't come without drawbacks as well. Well, the thing is, Pokemon the last few generations has gotten a nasty reputation of releasing games in what many consider to be half-baked. Oftentimes finding parts of the game that just barely stuttering along and having the players have to wait for the game to catch up to their own actions. For many who love the series, it's quite the damper to put on games that should be some of the most revolutionary to the industry. So why are the games lagging behind? Why has this been a problem for almost four years at this point? Why hasn't this been fixed? Because they don't have to! That's definitely an opinion. Why would Nintendo and Game Freak make the games properly the first time and try and optimize it to run better when the games are going to sell potentially more than they ever have anyway? Look at the games that have released the last four years despite almost each one receiving significant controversy throughout the release period. Each and every one of them sold over 10 million copies. For any video game company, that's considered a success. On top of that, for every single Pokemon game release, the modding community goes absolutely wild. Modders of these games tackle a crazy number of projects when it comes to these games. From fixing the game itself, to making the experience unique and varied from playthrough to playthrough. This in itself is the power of modding. But ultimately, it shouldn't be left to the community to fix the game that they care about. Basically, the game really just needs more time to cook. Speaking of cooking, let's see how our game's doing. Nope, definitely needs more time. Now, Pokemon isn't the only culprit for this. Even for game developers that are absolutely adored by the community, you can see this. When From Software branched out from their regular release of the Dark Souls games and released Bloodborne, it was met with great praise for shaking things up with the series. But in today's landscape, the lack of an update to bring the game to something higher than its 30 FPS frame cap has forced people to not only emulate the game on PC because it's stuck on PlayStation storefront, but it's forced people to mod it and unlock the capabilities of higher frame rates. Now, there are people who say that oftentimes people are overreacting and things are being blown out of proportion and that these games are perfectly playable as they are. I like using it this way. At the end of the day, I love the mods that people create for games, but I also wish that they didn't have to do so in order for so many people to enjoy a game that they paid full price for. But luckily, I'm not alone. There's someone else out there who hates the idea of mods existing in the first place. That's right, our friend Nintendo again. Oh, hey. <gasps> But everything we just talked about was about how Nintendo benefits and even profits off of the people who mod their games to make them more playable. Why would they take them down so ruthlessly? Sure! Be 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 because it's their rights! Oh. It can be truly baffling on why Nintendo is so hellbent on taking out each and every modded version of their game. Well, yes, they ultimately don't want pirated illegal versions of the game being used to mod, there are always ways to make it so everyone wins. You can see this in games like Skyrim, 
where modding is so encouraged, the devs themselves have encouraged people to use a kit to help them to mod the game that much easier. This helps keep games alive and cultivates a diehard fanbase. If Nintendo were to listen to the community more and add things into the game that they've been asking for for years, there would not be nearly as many people who would mod their games and probably increase everyone's enjoyability of the game overall, which can lead to more sales. I mean, even talking about modding Nintendo games in a YouTube video is incredibly stress-inducing. At any point in time, they could come for me. I, for one, would really like to see a Nintendo board meeting where they talk about how these issues are handled. Now, are we all clear here on this uh, next part? Yep. Yep. For so many, modding has made some people's dream careers into reality. For others, it's made the games we actually love into something that's playable. And it's made a lot of games in general, too. Heck, there's probably someone out there with a deep-rooted memory that has to do with a mod. Oh, f I left the game in the oven too long, and now it's never gonna release!